Hello. <laughs> and we are we are now live with this week's Hangout on Air uh, for Loop, Learn English with a Worldwide Perspective. Always hoping more loopers will join us. Uh, Gerard is a faithful attendee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, wondered if you saw the post I shared with the link for yes. the topic today, 10 Ways to Be a Leader at Work When You're Not the Boss. <laughs> um, yeah. And many of us, if not all of us, have been in that position at one time or another, um, whether we're doing work for our parents and our parents are the boss or whether we're employed in some position and we're not the boss but ways to be looked at or perceived as a leader. And I thought some of the 10 items listed were quite interesting and wasn't completely sure I agreed with them. So I thought it would make a fun topic for discussion. So do you consider yourself a leader? Mm, not really. <laughs> some, sometimes? Well, sometimes during the summer I have to do the role of leader. Okay, so I have to take, assume or take the role. Assume the role or take, um, or a uh, or the. Um, but you take a role or assume a role are more common collocations. Um, so, what feels different when you are a leader? Can you think of ways to describe what is different about a leader, mm -hmm. yourself or another? Yes, I can talk by from my experience. Mm -hmm. So I feel the weight of the responsibility. Responsibility. Okay, I'm so a weight. Mm -hmm. Is that a positive feeling or a negative feeling, do you think? No, I think it's positive. Because some people only like the good things that being a boss involves. That you can order things, <laughs> you have a better wage, uh, etc. But the weight of responsibility is important because uh, our employers uh, is giving us a responsibility when they want us to be a boss. Okay, interesting point that, that some people like certain aspects of leadership more <laughs> than others. <laughs> uh, and and I, I think, um, well I know I have heard many people say, who, me? When um, a supervisor or manager suggests that they might step up to another position, um, many people don't think of themselves as a leader. And yet many of us follow some of the um, ideas mentioned in this, this article. So it's um, Suzanne Lucas of uh, INC Inc. Incorporated um, wrote this article and she starts, when founders and CEOs look to hire and promote managers, they want people who exhibit leadership. So how do you exhibit leadership? <clears throat> when you are the first to take a decision, so initiative, first to make a decision. Um, so you display or demonstrate uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. And when you are not afraid to do so. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so willing, uh, willing to face the fear or not afraid. And the fear and the consequences. <laughs> important little addition there. <laughs> uh, yes, the consequences can be quite serious sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's actually that 
that last comment and the consequences that first enabled me to accept that maybe I am sometimes a leader. I don't feel comfortable with that title still. Um, and the biggest reason I don't is on this list. Uh, number nine. <laughs> number nine on her ten items. Um, the strongest reason I don't feel I have what it takes to be a strong leader is that I have trouble developing a thick skin. <laughs> um, this is an expression uh, used, and there's Akdaraman. Hello. Can you hear us? Hello. Yay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello, Abdurrahman. Nice to, to see you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you join us. Yeah. And any, okay, any, any echo from my side? Uh, a little bit. Not as strong as usual. Um, so very, very bearable today. So if you want to leave your mic on, it's okay on my end. And it's okay for you, Gerard? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Better than usual. A problem on my end, so my side is better than usual um, today. So I put the link there that we're talking, the uh, website that we're talking about, the post about leadership, 10 ways to show that you're a leader. And I was talking about number nine. Um, and the expression to develop a thick skin. And I think we actually talked about this in a hangout on idioms um, a few months ago, <laughs> this idiom. But so you can have thin skin like I do, and then everything bothers you. You're sensitive. If you have a callus, if you work in the garden or work out and you have a, a callus, uh, on your skin, you get a thicker skin, and then you don't feel things. It doesn't hurt. Um, and and this is the area that I feel quite weak in. I've just always been a sensitive person. Um, so do you agree with this? It helps to uh, demonstrate, to show, to exhibit signs of being a strong leader is that you have a thick skin, you don't let things bother you, or you don't show that they bother you? Yes, I think that's, uh, that's positive. I think I have this quality, because mm -hmm. what, that something bothers you is a subjective thing. <laughs> it's a subjective thing, that depends on your point of view. <laughs> So, Some people are more touchy than others. Mm -hmm. Touchy is a good adjective to use when you're touchy, you're sensitive, everything uh, feels stronger. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have been touchy and sensitive my entire life. Touchy, however, has a more negative um, connotation in general use. Um, many women are accused of being especially touchy once a month <laughs> um, mm -hmm. when they are um, more sensitive than usual. So when you're touchy, things are bothering you more than usual. <clears throat> so sometimes I'm very touchy, but I, I don't think I am all of the time. My husband might argue <laughs> uh, with that. but So touchy has a much more negative being sensitive. Um, touchy is closer to over-sensitive. Mm -hmm. So do you think politicians who have very thick skins, uh, presidents <laughs> sometimes, usually, try to have thick skins? Is yeah. that always, is it always a good quality? Yes, because 
Sometimes politicians uh, say things that they shouldn't, because in a moment of anger, they say things of oh, what I said. So it's a positive thing having a thicker skin. So if you have a thick skin and things don't bother you, you're much less likely to over. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is is your point? Because they're not the same thing, but I think they do work together. Yeah. Are you having trouble with the sound now? Mm, a little, but it's not that important. Ah. Hmm. I just noticed it looked like you weren't able to hear as well. Um. So of these ten, ten items, number three, number three, by I hear Abdurrahman? Yeah. Yes. I just uh, want to know if uh, I think see, uh, uh, skin is mean that um, that uh, it, uh, it, it, um, uh, it will be not uh, uh, possible. Is it that? Um, irresponsible? That, no. That the, pers um, that the person must be not must be not uh, so uh, too sensible. Is uh, this uh, sociable? Uh, Is this no, the word you're saying? Sensi 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 sensible. Sensible. Uh, yes. There's a uh, okay big difference between sensitive and when you have a thick skin. You're not as sensitive. Has nothing to do with sensibility, um, yes. but how sensitive, how you react. So if you're, um, if you don't have a thick skin, and someone says, "Hey, you're stupid," then you might react and punch them in the face, and that's not a very smart reaction for anyone. <laughs> Um, to make okay. most of the time. So if you have a thick skin, you're able to take the bad and not let it show, not react. You keep doing your job and you are not deterred um, by negativity, by things that throw might throw others out of balance. For you, you, you can take it. You can take the negative energy and comments and events and just keep going, keep leading. Okay. Okay. So number three is an interesting idiom also. It's don't be a doormat. What does that mean? What is a doormat? Gerard, ideas? Don't be a doormat? Um, a person that flatters the others? Ah. Um, huh. Interesting. And I hear Abdurman. Did you want to say something, Abdurrahman? No, no, I just, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my headset uh, wasn't, uh, didn't go good, so I, I think uh, that you, you speak, with, uh, you, you, you talk with me. Ah, okay. Uh, to both of you, um, wondering what meaning you get from don't be a doormat. And I think the explanation given here is a little different from how um, how I think of being a doormat. So a doormat is the small piece of carpet or um, material that's put in front of a door that you wipe your feet on when you come in so that you don't bring mud into the house. 
So in many households you or offices, maybe you take your shoes off. But if you don't use the doormat, um, then you bring mud into the house, dirt into this. So if you're if you are the doormat, you let people walk all over you. You let people wipe themselves on you. Um, so, it, so <laughs> being a doormat is a bad thing. <laughs> and the way they explain it here, um, the explanation they give is interesting. And maybe Gerard will read it for us. I copied it here, or you can read the article. The, 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 the leaders stand up, stand up for themselves politely. Jerks stand up for themselves rudely. If somebody interrupts you in a meeting, simply say, I'm sorry, can I finish? If your slimy co-worker tries to dump her work on you, say, that won't be possible. Does this mean you never do a favor? Absolutely not. You do favors, but you do so because you are nice or because it benefits you and the company, not because you can't say no. So there's a lot here, and I'm not sure that I would put that under the title of don't be a doormat. Um, but slime, the slimy and slime is not slim, but slimy. Mm -hmm. Slime is not nice stuff. So if you're a slimy person, you're not a very nice person. <laughs> uh, and a slimy co-worker is one who tries to get everyone else to do his or her job um, and to be that way, hopefully. Uh, so to be a leader, you deal with those slime balls, the negative slang word, slime balls, to talk about those jerks. <laughs> um, so it, if you have slime balls at your workplace, a leader will not act slimy along with the slime balls, but uh, someone who demonstrates potential leadership will stay polite but firm stand up for yourself, but um, not accept the slime, but not be slimy back to <laughs> the slime ball. <laughs> uh, and I think many of us have had to deal with, probably each of you has had to deal with somewhere there is a rude person. Um, and you can either sink to their level. This is another expression sometimes used. You can sink down to their level and act just like them, or you can show that you're a better person and try to respond in a more civil and um, effective way. <laughs> so I agree with this one. What about number four? Help others. Do you think a strong leader helps others consistently? Yes. Yes. Because in this way, um, can get more trust from his subordinates. Mm -hmm. It's vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can help too much. Yes. No. Mm. Yes. You. Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes happens that subordinates take advantage of that, and the boss do more than they should do. So. The boss, the leader, must find a middle term. I think yes. Uh, you agree with that? Leader, uh, yes, yes, I agree. I agree with um, that. 
when a, a leader must uh, help uh, who is in need uh, help and who who's uh, worth need. Mm. Yes, yes. Not, uh, and how does a leader determine who who is worth helping? <laughs> uh. Yes. Not. Uh, mm. I, I mean. I mean. Uh, they should not help uh, in any way. Not help everyone or anyone in all ways or any way should be uh, thoughtful. So help in a thoughtful way. <laughs> uh, think first before you act. Not too impulsively. Uh, this is another area, and I don't know if that's in this list of 10 or not, but another area that I feel I have a weakness often is that I am impulsive. Um, and I think stronger leaders are less impulsive. Would you agree with that? Uh, that a strong the, leader, a strong leader is not yeah. not overly impulsive. Mm. Hmm. When I think of situations where leadership has um, gone awry, not gone well, something has gone off or wrong because of a decision made too quickly. Um, sometimes you have to act quickly <laughs> and there's where the, the irony can come in. Um, I so it works both ways. Mm -hmm. It's related not being too impulsive with having a thicker skin. It's related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> so communicating clearly sounds so simple, but not so easy to do. <laughs> uh, but again, I think most uh, appreciated leaders are able to communicate um, certainly leaders are not forgiven when communication is not a strong point. This was not uh, President Bush's greatest strength to communicate clearly uh, in speeches and even with speech writers he had some trouble um, and, and it was hard. He got teased a lot for it. He was a leader and had many strong attributes but when you're in a leadership position your weaknesses might show longer than they do for others. So how do you learn to communicate clearly? Mm, thinking beforehand what you need to communicate. you don't have natural communication skills. Mm, I'm listen listening for um, a word <laughs> um, and I just, just spoke the word I'm listening for is listen. <laughs> uh, many people say that to communicate clearly you must first learn uh, to listen and that many strong leaders learn the art of listening. Here, she says leaders don't grumble. Grumble is a nice word. Leaders don't grumble behind closed doors when things go, when things don't go there. And I have worked for uh, managers who did just that when things were not going their way um, 
he or she might have a hissy fit and close their door and just hide in their office for a few hours. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that's not the smartest way to lead. Um, and another challenge I have is a strong leader doesn't say yes when they should have said no. <laughs> they say what they mean and they do so in a way that people understand. This is not advocating rudeness, but it is advocating dropping passive aggressive behavior. So what does passive aggressive behavior mean? How would you explain that in your own words? Mm. Dropping passive aggressive behavior. Which yeah, point? So what 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 is passive aggressive behavior in your own words? How would you explain what that means? Um, when you are angry and you don't show directly to to the others that you are actually angry, but you are angrily inside. Mm. So you're saying a passive aggressive behavior is within yourself? You're fighting within yourself? Mm. Yeah, some, sometimes some bosses are angry and they don't say anything until the moment they explode. <laughs> they blow up. So they keep, uh, they keep this and happiness, this, 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 uh, this, angry, this anger, mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of trying to solve the problem. Okay, so either extreme is often seen as a negative or a positive in different situations. So passive is usually perceived as weak and wimpy, unwilling to speak your mind okay I accept so it is the e or person who says nothing and just does what they are told even if they disagree with it an aggressive behavior would be um, rebellious angry or explosive reacting um, uh, and a balance is usually best way to deal with situations, but you must know how to deal with uh, people from both sides. You want to try to encourage a passive worker, usually, um, and to tamp down or temper, hone down um, a more aggressive behavior, a person with a more aggressive behavior. So if you're dealing with a situation, you don't want to say, oh, you're right, I'm sorry, if you're the boss, if you're the manager, the one that's looked up to as a leader. And you also don't want to say, no, I'm right, just do what I say. Um, you want to find something in between most of the time is what they're advocating here. Do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Can you think of experiences you've had with someone who was either passive or aggressive or sometimes both? Someone who had uh, almost a bipolar personality? Bipolar. bipolar no, but aggressive uh, bosses and passive aggressive bosses, yes. <laughs> and Abdurrahman, have you had to deal with people on both ends of this spectrum? What? Have you had to deal with leaders who were Excuse me, aggressive and leaders who were 
not willing to stand up and defend? I just typed my question and have you had to deal with people who were either passive, mild, meek, or aggressive, overly strong? Um, um, uh. I don't know, maybe, but not uh, as my boss, maybe in uh, uh, some other uh, person who mm -hmm. work in, uh, in some administration or in, in, in any other field, but uh, not as, uh, as my uh, boss. Okay. As, yes, yes. Uh, I think... Uh, I have an idea that uh, later uh, sometimes or uh, have to to got uh, some contra uh, uh, contradictions in his personality. So he, ha he have uh, to be uh, uh, soft and hard. Uh, uh, you know the. the uh, yeah, no, good vocabulary, uh, uh, clear. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pure, I'm pure, I'm pure silly, I think, for... In, impulsive? Are you trying to remember impulsive? Yeah, yes, impulsively, yes, okay. Yes, and if you're not in control of your emotions, you're overly impulsive and you react yes, either way. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, impulsively and at the same time have to be uh, uh, to take to take the decision. So uh, not with this way, but he has or he has to to take a decision and faster sometimes. So uh, I mean just that uh, leaders sometimes must uh, got some contradictions of things. You have to got it. I don't know if my idea is clear. I think so. With the possible correction of the verb, if you um, make the decision you decide. If you take the decision, you accept it. Um, okay. make and I think, I think you meant make the decision. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. make the decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you can take it lightly or you can take it aggressively. <laughs> uh, uh, if you're not the leader, but if you are the leader, you must make the decision, or people expect you to make the decision. Some leaders are full of indecision, uh, which creates its own challenges. I can attest to that. <laughs> if you stay in a place of indecision too long, more trouble comes. So who do you prefer dealing with? Which is easier? Who? Who is easier to deal with, a passive co-worker or an aggressive co-worker? <clears throat> Who can you take the easiest? Who's the easiest to work with over a long period of time? <clears throat> A passive co-worker. So maybe I should ask it this way: Who would who would you rather work with, a passive or aggressive? And you say passive, Gerard? Yes. Because. Because you don't have to deal with the, the anger, and the negative feelings that an aggressive worker involves. Working with an aggressive worker. 
Коворка. Mm-hmm. So I'll play the devil's advocate, but a passive coworker is boring and makes work unexciting. And at least if you have an aggressive, more often aggressive coworker, it keeps things lively. Mm. What does it mean for you, passive coworker? Someone who just does their job quietly and doesn't speak up about anything and takes the good and the bad without reaction. Mm. Mild, lacking personality is how I perceive. Well, I don't like streams, but mm. if I had to choose, if I had to choose, I would choose a, a passive because I don't want, I don't want to be in a fight every day while I'm working. If this passive person does his job, at least I, w- I won't have any problem with him. Another thing would be that it's a passive, uh, a lazy, <laughs> a lazy co-worker. Um, and, and that's something that I um, have defended in the past, that perception. I think you're right. I think passive employees are sometimes labeled or assumed to be somewhat lazy, but that's not always true. Um, Definitely not always true. Hmm. Actually, sometimes the laziest employees are the more aggressive ones who make a lot of noise but don't do, aren't very productive. Yeah, Um, and and show off of being uh, very good workers. (laughs) (laughs) Not everyone. (laughs) Both. Yeah. What about learn flexibility? How do you how does that show that you're a leader? Okay, so then that means you listen the ideas of the subordinates. Listen to the ideas. I think I do so when I am the boss. Certainly you do for Loop uh, whenever you're in class. You're an excellent listener. But uh, uh, in the summer when I'm working at night, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm two, twice a week I'm the boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, I listen the ideas of my subordinates because sometimes the ideas are good. And I ponder, I mull over, I ponder them, mm-hmm. and then I take a decision. But yeah. some bosses think stupidly, think that if you <laughs> you take into account the ideas of your subordinates, that's a weakness. Yes, we have an expression, my way or the highway, uh, in American English. He says, you do it what I say, or you hit the road, you're out the door. (laughs) Um, Don't like it, leave. (laughs) Uh, And and I think there are leaders who, unfortunately, try to operate this way. Sometimes these leaders know that the subordinates are white, but they don't want to give a medal to them. Mm. And I definitely agree with number five. Take responsibility for your mistakes. Own your mistakes. This uh, own your whatever is a uh, becoming a, a buzzword or a buzz phrase. To own it is 
used a lot. It's nice and short, and I think this is why it's being used a lot in social media because it has fewer characters and expresses a lot. So own your mistakes, uh, own it. So it possess them, take them, accept them as your problem. Point the finger uh, where it belongs. Don't try to blame someone else. And then six, listen, is given its own. I've mentioned that several times. What about number seven? Take risks. Is that a good sign? Is that a sign that shows that you have leadership potential? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, yes Abdurrahman? Mm -hmm. Of course. Any leaders, uh, any leader have uh, to uh, sometimes uh, some uh, situations which have to uh, be brave to take risks. Um, uh, um, many time or usually it's not her shoes, but uh, he has to deal with this risk. Uh, if it doesn't do so it, uh, he can't go w away I think yeah, take action take risks um, yes. some people think that this is opposite um, or conflicting contradictory with um, saying don't be impulsive but do take risks What's the difference between taking a risk and being impulsive? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think if you take a risk, you have to think beforehand if taking this risk is worth the benefit mm -hmm. can provide. But if you are impulsive, you don't think, you don't ponder anything. No. I mean, some uh, I mean, sometimes. Uh, even um, uh, the boss uh, take some ideas uh, with uh, his group and uh, find that he has to act, act and take risk about something or some. Uh, but uh, the difference between two bosses uh, then when when uh, when. Uh, he can take risk when uh, when the, deci the deci decision uh, decision decision is uh, the good decision. It uh, that he have to take risk. But the other the, the second one, even it's helpful to take risk, but he can't do it. He afraid or scared about uh, the consequence or I don't know. Yes, I, I, I think you both have the same thoughts I do, that uh, part of taking risks does not mean taking them impulsively, um, at least not completely impulsively. There's a little bit of impulse to any strong risk taking because you don't know. A risk is that unknown. So if you're, there are people who won't take an action until they know what's going to happen. And sometimes we just can't know. We just have to plan for as many contingencies as we can. Think about all of the stakeholders, the parties involved, and be willing to try to go for it, even if we fail. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, in the bloggers world, mm -hmm. go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes uh, someone uh, said that uh, a good businessman, but one who uh, who can take risks, risks and uh, ha or at least uh, have uh, is uh, he is able to to take risks when yes. 
even in uh, in, in 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 a business field. Yeah, and there's a lot um, recently being pushed uh, about this concept, trying to change education because. When I was in school, I learned that it was bad, bad, bad to fail. Don't fail. Mm -hmm. You were trying for 100%. Anything less was a failure. Um, and that pressure was constant. Don't, 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 don't. You're bad, bad, bad if you fail. And then you get to the real world after school, and you have to fail. You have to be willing to uh, not know the answer and to take that risk and they're trying to find a way to uh, encourage that risk taking and honor that validate it as a valuable skill of course um, Gerard used the word extremes <laughs> and you can take that to extreme uh, like anything else mm. And number eight, remember to network. What does that mean to you to remember to network? I don't know if that's not clear for me. Okay. What sorts of things are you thinking about when you think about remember to network? This is where my mind went. So I might ask, do you still keep in touch with anyone from any prior um, school, college, or workplaces, or places you've lived? Do you keep in touch with anyone from your past? Mm, yes. Actually, two, two years ago or three years ago, we had a meeting with school colleagues. Um, we didn't see each other for 50 years. Wow. And thanks, um, thanks to Facebook. Yeah. yeah. So this is part of net remembering to network is to, if you get a promotion to a leadership position or you have um, new responsibilities and um, someone in the parking lot had a conversation with you one day and you don't really need to talk with them anywhere else but you do you smile and connect you never know when that might help you in another position or might help when there is a challenge that the entire uh, business or building is dealing with having a connection from the past uh, to re-establish or to build on um, I've been surprised many times in my life with how important that can be and how nice it is when you reconnect and Facebook has helped a lot of us uh, mm -hmm. social media has certainly helped make it easier to reconnect um, but it's not just about finding a job it's not just about doing a job finishing one but you learn from people um, little things that people do can teach you and the more you reflect on that the better and you often reflect on it more if you keep the connection um, so not being too much into yourself no matter what level of management you're, you are or aren't working in um, build the bridges don't burn them build them is the idiom that many people use 
sometimes challenging if you're fired from a job, but <laughs> uh, that, that's a pretty burnt bridge most of the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, but just to remember everyone at every level that you that you can, um, I think. Mm -hmm. Some of that for me is mindfulness, another word that we're hearing a lot um, in today's business and personal world is being mindful. Think about what you're doing. Don't just be too impulsive without thinking about it. Reflecting has always been easy for me, but I'm learning more and more that it's not easy and not natural for a lot of people and a lot of um, retreats or workshops for employers and employees and community building is focusing on learning to journal, learning to ask yourself um, certain questions, to think about why and who and when and how. Um, very easy for me and natural for me, but apparently not a skill that everyone um, is comfortable with. So journaling, even at the workplace now, is being encouraged. There are programs that provide private journal space at work. And I always wonder if they're really private or if, <laughs> if they are. <laughs> uh, watched by by someone, monitored by someone. Um, so do either of you journal or have another reflective process that you you use? What do you mean if we write a journal? Do you write a journal, or do you have another routine um, that you follow that allows you to be mindful of all that's happened in your life? Well, I do meditation. It's the same as mi mindfulness. can be a synonym. Mm -hmm. But I don't write down what happened to my life. Uh, so you're not a journaler. <laughs> I'm not a writer. <laughs> like <you or> young. <laughs> uh, uh, I find um, daily work journals challenging, though. I'm, I'm actually trying to make myself do that more often. Um, I feel like I'm writing so much or documenting so much online that I feel like the reflection is is easy to look at and see, but but it's different when I'm mindfully thinking about what has been accomplished. Um, so I try to journal the positive. I try to journal what has been accomplished because I have no problem. <laughs> uh, uh, the other way, I document other challenges all day long. So, um, hmm. still working on number nine, developing a thick skin. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and we have five minutes left to talk about number ten. Don't ask for special treatment. But if you do ask for special treatment, you're not showing leadership qualities. Do you agree with that? Yes. Be because if you need a special treatment, that's a weakness. Ah. Hmm. A special treatment, I understand that ask for some benefits to ease your job, to make your job, our job easier. Mm. Abdurman, you want to say something? Uh, in fact, I don't uh, understand uh, this. Uh, mm. 
Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, I can. Uh, to be treated can, differently I than words. I can, I can understand the words, but uh, not the meaning. As as uh, as uh, idiom, I think he has uh, idioms meaning, no? Um, probably, if you think about it, treatment is an odd word, so it probably is more idiomatic than literal. Um, but in general, if you get a special treatment, it means that you are treated differently than your peers. So you think you deserve to be treated differently. So if everyone else has to work from 9 to 5, you think you should not have to come in until 9.30 because you're special. <laughs> um, <laughs> is, it could be an example. Deal, deal with uh, every, everyone uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, a special way? Um, the meaning? Well, this, the ten items are ways to show or exhibit signs that you have what it takes to be a leader. So if you have what it takes to be a leader, if you have leadership qualities, you will not ask for special okay. favors. Okay, okay, yes, yes. You, you have, to, you have to, 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 to deal with, the, uh, with the all in, a, in a the same way, I think. Or. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Yes. So do you agree with that? Um, I, th I think... Uh, uh, leader or uh, boss sometimes have to deal with uh, some person or some worker or some um, in a, in a in a in a speci special uh, uh, way when he has to do uh, maybe the others can't understand or understand him, but you have to do, I think. You're saying that if you are a leader, sometimes you do give special favors, special treatment? No, not, uh, not a favor, but uh, sometimes uh, worker need help, or I, I, is, if I understand this, uh, this uh, one, need a special uh, help for a moment or uh, a special special situation not uh, it's a social a social uh, f uh, thing not not uh, to give it this favor uh, to do another favor uh, <laughs> Yeah, so not not setting us up for uh, not for uh, <laughs> business or for uh, bad business. Uh, uh, so not a trail <laughs> of corruption, um, but sometimes there are extenuating circumstances, and this is actually what came to my mind because I I come from a culture that's very. Um, very much don't give special treatment, <clears throat> it's not fair, uh, I'll sue you or I will cause trouble, and yet people are treated differently for the wrong reasons many times, <clears throat> and sometimes there are situations where not everyone needs to know why, but a leader might choose to um, make an exception to do something different temporarily um, for a particular employee and it's difficult in American culture, US American culture to do that because unless you explain it and make private information public what the other co-workers see is unfair he or she got some special benefit that I didn't <laughs> and as a as a leader, that can be very difficult. Um, which choice to make? Do you tell everyone and explain and ask for understanding, or do you just 
say, shut up, do your work. Um, decision has been made. Um, and this is where human resources departments and larger companies um, come into play. <clears throat> Our hour is gone, so I want to wind down. Any quick questions or follow-up comments on that? No. We talk about everything. Yeah, we got through all ten. Uh, <laughs> interest, interesting discussion. Some good vocabulary I'll copy and share um, on the website. So I'm glad that you joined us, both of you. Thank you. And Thank you, Holly. Yes, and hope to see you again soon. I'm just going to okay. copy, copy the chat and then close the Hangout. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.